that's the first case. Let's give these a blast. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up, make gold, make gold, make gold. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So talking about the Alpha Fly Next Percent Nature Edition today. So this is Nike's move to zero to reduce their carbon footprint and also to make their first high performance slash sustainable shoe. This is different from the original Alpha Fly Next Percent that you see. It is a different upper and it's completely different midsole. So the upper is a combination of fly print and fly knit. So if you remember the fly print edition, which was Eddie the Kipchoge shoe that he wore for the 2018 London Marathon. This has a combination which is on the inside and outside of the actual shoe and a combination of fly knit. For me personally, this fits better than the original edition. I love the fit of this shoe because I felt as if the arch is quite prominent on the original shoe. In terms of the midsole, so the midsole is made up of all those recycled pairs of Vaporfly, all the ones you sent back to Nike which were used, and they basically just ground them all together and just squish them together and actually just bonding them all together into a midsole. You can actually see some of the glue marks on both sides of the shoe, which I think is done intentionally just to give it that sort of put together Frankenstein sustainable sort of look. The biggest question is can a shoe like this maintain its high performance? Can it still sustain it over miles, over miles, which I'll show you later in the video as we give it a first impression spin. The outside of the shoe, you get the same well covered grip on the forefoot. You get the zoom AirPods, you get the fly plate, along with the huge amount of cushioning underfoot, the big massive slab of Zoom X. In terms of the weight of the shoe, this actually comes in heavier than the original, which is a bit of a shock considering it is 50% recycled by weight, but it's coming at 262 grams. The original Alpha Fly Next Percent coming at 230 or so grams, and my Nike Vaporfly Next Percent coming about 195 grams, so under 200 grams. Definite a huge difference in weight, but the biggest talking point Let's not shy away from the fact that these retail for £295, which is a stonking amount of money. I don't know that many people that will actually go out and pay £295 for a sustainable nature edition of this shoe, considering it is not the same as the production level of the original Alphafly Next Percent. This is pelleted Zoom X. Does it still retain its structural rigidity over time? That is to be known. Does the upper still work as well as the original? Again, questions and doubts over spending that amount of money on this particular shoe, but it is there, they've released it. I do think it's something that Nike will do going forward, this sort of addition of their high performance shoes. So don't think that this is the last one that you'll see as a nature addition. But again, the price point is a huge amount of money. Does the everyday, everyday runner need to spend 295 pounds? Probably not, but if you like it, you wanna try it, you're gonna go out and spend it. Everyone is spending a lot of money on shoes these days. So I don't think this is completely out of the option for many people. How does it look? I think it looks great. Love the colorway, love the accents of the orange. On the upper, let's start with that. You've got the pull tabs on the heel and the tongue. Again, they fit exactly the same as the original. You get the same laces on, which are the ribbed ones, which I've kind of got used to now. They fit a lot better. You just need to get the right fit. Again, as I said with the upper, it just feels more snug. It feels more comfortable. It just hugs the foot better. And I want to see this upper on the Alpha Fly 2, which has now been shown around on Instagram. You've seen photos of it. And I'd love to see this upper because it just has a better feeling for me personally. Onto the midsole, as you can see, the Zoom X, which is sort of ground up and put together. Again, it is that split midsole across the two with the plate sandwich in between. And again, it's the same unchanged version on the bottom of the shoe. On the internal side, you get the massive Nike flywheel, which is, I think it looks nice. It looks great. It's not going to be many people's cup of tea, but hey. And on the outside of the shoe, you've got Swoosh, which is running on the lateral side of the shoe, which I love. I think it always makes the shoe look pretty quick and fast and quite slick as well. So let's give it a test and see what we think on our first impression run. So the shoes are on feet, done a little warm up for about 10 minutes or so, four times a kilometer at my sort of marathon pace. I'm not quite ready to sort of 
blast K repeats because I think I probably lost a bit of fitness and it has been two and a half weeks since I did any sort of speed work. Giving you a chance to think about how the shoes feel. But I'm not too sure if you can hear it or even the overlays of the sound, but they sound a tiny bit quieter than the original Alphafly. I'm not too sure if it's in my head, but or maybe just the way I'm striking my foot. They just sound a little bit more damp, a little bit more dissolved. Too sure if that may be to do with the foam, perhaps. I'm just gonna do a couple of sort of mobility drills and then I'm gonna get stuck into the session. Okay, that's the first K. Let's give these a blast. First K rep done. Can I feel the weight? Not really. Do they feel quick? Yes. My foot nice and secure? Yes. So far, one rep in and legs are not forgotten how to run quick. Rep number two. That's another rep done, rep two. Two to go. Almost resorted into a Kenyan shuffle on the recoveries. <laughs> they definitely feel very bouncy, very springy. No aches or pains, no pain points at the moment, no rubbing, which is great. So, so far, so good on the shoes. Rep three, let's go. Let's try and aim for another 610k, which I think is around 348 minutes per kilometer. Let's give this a crack. Rep three done, one to go. Fourth and final rep, let's go. Six oh five minutes for my average. Nice shuffle back. And then we're going to talk all cool down. Oh, I can't speak. And then give my thoughts on what I think about the shoes. So I'm back in from the run and really enjoyed running in the shoes. They felt really nice and bouncy on the foot. They felt pretty good to run in, nice and smooth transition, good propulsion in the actual shoes itself. Didn't actually feel the weight, I can't really, really say I felt them. Turnover was pretty good. The one thing I would say, something that I felt during the run, so it was only four times a kilometer. Obviously I'm coming back from the London Marathon, first session back, so my legs are not in the same shape as they would be for when pre London Marathon in terms of turnover, cadence, leg strength, leg speed, the way I move my legs, just a general feeling that you don't feel as snappy as myself. So that's myself not the shoe. What I actually felt during the run was, are my legs turning over quickly enough? They felt poppy underfoot, good propulsion on the AirPods and the plate, but compared to the previous pair, I think they feel a little bit more snappier and definitely compared to the Vaporfly, that is in a different ballpark. I can't say that it's a large gap. It's They're very, very similar. Moving forward, I'd love to get myself back into shape, back into a feeling where I feel quicker, and then I'll give these another spin and then repeat the session. In terms of the cadence, what I ran, I ran basically a 350, another 349, 349, 345 for the splits, and my cadence was around the 181, 182, 183. 184 mark for that speed i'd expect it to be around the 186 mark and even if you look at the ground contact time in how quickly my foot is settling down and then springing back up it is around the figure that i'd expect it to be if not it could be a tad lower in summary this is a really great shoe i would love to see this upper on the next version of the shoe or an option to buy on the next version of this shoe. This upper beats the Atomnit on the version one, potentially the midsole you'd want from the actual version one shoe because the pop and the propulsion is a tiny, tiny bit different. Is that down to the structure of the Zoom X? Is that down to how the plate responds in the sandwich in the front of the shoe? Potentially, it's all part of the system. It's a system weaker. 
I don't know, but there are gaps in the Zoom X. Does that create an air gap? Does that create a level of propulsion, which you don't feel as much in a shoe, which has a complete slab of foam? to be confirmed, to be continued. With that aside, it is a shoe I'm gonna keep in my rotation. I will run more miles in this shoe, give it some tempos and definitely a race day experience to give it more of a run out and to see how the shoe performs under different scenarios, which would be a great measure of the shoe itself. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe down to the channel down below and make sure you share it with everyone else. In the meantime, wish you all the best with running and until the next time, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.